Welcome. It's wonderful to be here with you today. It's wonderful to uh, see your faces. And also, as soon as we click that button to go live online, your, your names and uh, feeds show up immediately in our comment section. And we're so delighted to see that. Thanks so much for tuning in with us and connecting with your church family. We hope that today is a tremendous blessing to each of us. You know, and it will be if we open up our hearts to the Lord, if we uh, come with listening ears and open minds and, and ready to act on what God says to us, we will be blessed and the world will be blessed and other people will be blessed through us. So uh, let's remember our mission that God has given us of making disciples of his son Jesus. And we have committed here at Pleasant Hill to do that through reaching out to others with the love and the good news of Christ by growing together through worshiping and studying and then by serving God and our neighbors in all that we do. In all that we do. Uh, I just want to remind you, we won't be printing bulletins uh, for the next while, um, but uh, our bulletins are available on our website. If you look uh, under the About tab and then click on Resources, uh, you will find the bulletin with announcements, birthdays, anniversaries, and stewardship reports there. So uh, feel free to check out that, uh, whether you're here or, or at home or, or any time during the week. We're going to ask that everyone uh, present, keep, please keep your masks on through the entire worship service. I know it's an inconvenience and it gets hot, but uh, let's do that for the sake of one another. I also um, want to remind you that our, our Sunday school classes won't be meeting in person for now, and I'm so thankful for Miss Diane Jordan for leading us in the online Sunday school lessons each week. I'm not sure how many you've done now, but it's a bunch of them, and so thank you, Diane, for doing that. Um, I do want to encourage our committees, our classes, our groups to meet together, though, whether it's through Zoom or whether it's even here at church in the fellowship hall or uh, in another large room like the, the youth room or even the choir room where we can spread out and see one another. We'd have to wear masks and we'd have to follow social distancing and, and sort of clean up after ourselves. But there's something about being t together. There's something about being able to, to see one another. And so I want to encourage you to consider doing that as, as, your, uh, as a class. You know, um, at least, you know, email one another and, and call one another to check on one another to see how, how you're doing. But I want to encourage you to, to hold on to that fellowship. There's, there's a tremendous value in that. And Jesus says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. So we, we've been asked as United Methodists to, to say this at each of our gatherings, that if uh, any one of us who is here today comes down with uh, COVID-19 to please notify the church immediately uh, so that we can uh, let those who are present possibly exposed to know about it. And there's some procedures that we are uh, asked to follow, you know, in, that, in, in the event that happens. Uh, but just please uh, let us know. Uh, it could help us, um, you know, limit the, the spread, you know, if, if it starts. So, and again... Yeah. We are hoping and praying that these limits are as temporary as possible. We don't know uh, when we're going to be able to relax them, but uh, we're going to stay tuned to the news and uh, to the re recommendations of, of the proper officials, and we'll make that determination as, as soon as we can. Uh, please continue to remember the Bel, Bel Air Food Pantry. Uh, they could use your help and, and your support. It would really be a, a great way to help folks in need in our community and take, take some pressure off of them, uh, providing groceries for them. I want to remind our Staff Parish Relations Committee, we have a meeting today at 5.30, and check your email, uh, folks on the committee. Uh, Diane will be sending out uh, a notice whether that's an in-person meeting here today or on Zoom at 5.30, so check your email for that. Uh, I want to give you an update on where we are with the Back to School Bash. I know a lot of you have um, participated with that and, and really enjoyed it. We've decided to modify it a little bit this year. Um, we will not be giving out shoes uh, because of the social distancing and, and risk there. Uh, we're going we're gonna to purchase the shoes and, and have them. We can do that possibly at a later date when we feel it's appropriate and, and safe. But we will be packing backpacks and school supplies, and we'll make it more of a drive-through event uh, that the county was a lot more at ease with. Um, and, um, and also uh, the South Carolina United Methodist Church. So, uh, again, these limits are affecting so much, but it can't keep us from doing ministry. It can't keep us from loving our neighbor. It can't keep us from worshiping God and, and, and praying, wherever that may be, whether it's at church or at home. Okay, so let's continue to exercise our faith as, 
as best we can through these situations. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, Diane and Liz and their crew for putting on the wonderful Staycation Bible School. Diane's here with us, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about that. But there were some wonderful skits and music and crafts and science lessons that the kids enjoyed. I loved uh, looking at the pictures of, that you posted on Facebook of uh, your families in, enjoying uh, those activities. Um, and I'm very thankful that we had that capability and that many of you uh, took advantage of that and, and used it to, to grow and, and learn from God's Word. Do we have other announcements we need to share? Very well, friends. Let's, let's stand um, and look at one another and pass the peace and love of Christ with the sign language that says, I love you. Peace. Peace. I think it's no, and let us allow the words from Psalm 84 <laughs> verses 1 and 2 call us to worship how lovely is your dwelling place Lord Almighty my soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the example of the writer of Psalm 84 who said, my soul yearns and even faints for the Lord. Father, give us a desire for you. Help us, Lord God, to, to yearn for you and, and want to be close with you and want to do your will. Lord, please soften our hearts today. Please humble us. And please help us to look to you eagerly wanting to learn and grow from your goodness and your love, and your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I look down here. <laughs> it's just like sanctuary. Nobody on the front row. Y'all notice that? Yeah, that reminded me of a, of a story. Y'all heard the, the story about the church that was building a new sanctuary. And they told everybody, stay out. Don't come in until it's all done. So the first Sunday... They come in, the preacher comes in the back door, and he looks, and he says, there, there are no pews. Where, where are the pews? The head deacon reaches over and touches the button. Pew pops up. People sit down, and it's all the way to the front. He said, hey, man, this is good. People came in, sat down on the next pew. It went all the way down to the front. The preacher got up, and he started preaching, and the man, he was just hammering down on it. He thought that was good stuff, and Look back, and it was like one minute to 12, and he said, I got five more minutes to this to go. I got, I got to get this in, and he starts preaching, starts preaching, and he's preaching. All of a sudden, the trap door opens, and he disappears. And the whole congregation stands up and goes, amen. <laughs> I think in the new building, we could, probably, we could probably work a trap somewhere. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's stand and sing together a wonderful hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Ye saints of the Lord, he is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen and help thee and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. A soul that on Jesus still leads for repose, I will not, I will not desert to its post. And so, though all hell should endeavor to shake, 
Thank you, band. Friends, let us share in our affirmation of faith this morning the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, again, I want to continue to thank you for your continued support of God's work and ministry through this church. Uh, We are uh, continuing to stay afloat uh, by your generosity. Uh, You continue to go out of your way to um, bring your gifts and your offerings uh, to the church, whether it's through the mail, whether it's through our online uh, giving system now through Tithely or through your bank's um, uh, online bill pay service. We really do appreciate that. It takes a lot of stress off of me and the rest of the staff and our committees. Um, You are keeping us afloat not only for today, uh, but also for the future. You're continuing to remember uh, uh, the building uh, and and what it's going to take to to fund that, Um, and so I can't say how humbled I am and how grateful I am for your generosity. It means a lot, and it uh, helps me believe even more that God is at work among us, and God's going to continue to be at work among us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the gifts that our church family and others have given this church for your work. And Father, we thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you, God, for their desire to see this church grow and and do your will and and your work. And Lord, we pray for your wisdom and your guidance uh, for myself and the staff and all of our committees, Father, to make the best use possible of, of the funds that they have given to you through this church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Miss Diane Jordan is here to lead us in a children's sermon. Good morning, everybody. First, I would like to say thank you again to everyone who participated in VBS. Um, When COVID really started to hit around the middle of March, we had just opened VBS registration, and we only had 69 children registered. And we didn't know what it was going to look like or how it was going to go together. Were we going to have it here at the church? Was it going to be online? We didn't know what was going to happen. This is all new to all of us. And I would like to tell you that, and this gives me chills, we had 101 children participate in Vacation Bible School through our virtual staycation experience. So thank you to everyone who told your friends and your neighbors and your grandchildren. I know my own grandchildren also participated from their homes. And so thank you so much that we were able to touch so many lives. Um, I know for a fact that some of the children who participated this year do not come from Christian homes. And so we were able to plant seeds, those mustard seeds. And so just thank you to Liz and to everybody that took part in it, to Lauren, to Joel. Thank you so much. On our Children's Ministry Facebook page, each Sunday, you can find our children's Sunday school lesson. And it is posted there by myself or by someone else on the Children's Ministry Committee. Um, Today, I did the story, but you can always find it at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And it is the Sunday school curriculum that we would have been doing if we had been able to meet in person. Um, Everyone from second grade and up has a deep blue Bible. And if you have a child who is a rising second grader, 
please email me at dce at pleasanthillmethodist.org so that we can make sure that your child gets presented with a Bible this year. Our story today from the Bible is from the book of Acts, and it, it takes place in Acts 16, verses 11 through 15, and it's all about a very special woman named Lydia. And Lydia shows us how to become leaders by offering hospitality to everyone. And I thought that was so, it was such a wonderful lesson to have, right, as we're finishing up VBS with all these kids that were able to participate from all these different homes and all these other different states and all. And Lydia is a very important person. She was a very wealthy woman. She owned her own business, which was not very common back then. And she owned her own home. And she had gone out with some ladies to pray. And what's interesting is they're not praying in a synagogue or a church. They're praying out by a river. And as they're out there praying one day, Paul comes by to the riverbank and sees them praying. Paul then tells the women about Jesus. And while Lydia was already a believer, can you imagine if you got to meet Paul in person? how that would deepen your faith and your knowledge and just all of that. So right then and there, Lydia decides that she's going to devote her life to God. And she goes home and tells everyone about Jesus. She had everyone in her family, all of her servants, everyone was baptized. And Lydia then became a very important leader in the Christian church. And the other thing that Lydia did was after they had prayed at the riverbank, she invited Paul and his friends to come back to her house. She opened her home to them, and she provided them with hospitality. And hospitality just means welcoming everybody. And we are a church that welcomes everybody. Our church has been so wonderful about reaching out into our community with things like the Back to School Bash and Salkahatchee and VBS. And so... I just challenge you in this coming week to think about ways that you can offer hospitality to someone. This morning, I had the Extraordinary Life class, which I do every Sunday morning at 9. Um, we meet through a Zoom class meeting, and we talk. And some of us talked about how isolating this is. I'm blessed that I'm isolated at home with my husband, but some people are isolated at home alone. And so I challenge you to offer hospitality to this week. Reach out to someone in our church community. Also, the people that are living in assisted living, like Miss Georgia Potts, Miss Myrtle Douglas, reach out to Barney and Arlene Blackwelder. They cannot have visitors. They cannot go out where they're living. So just pick up a phone and call someone. And I just challenge you to offer hospitality like Lydia showed us in our Bible story. Thank you. This brings us to our time of prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you make yourself available to us. Father, we thank you that you desire a relationship with each of us, not through our church or not through our family or, or other people of faith, but God, you desire a relationship, a personal relationship with each one of us. And Lord, I pray that that truth can sink in to each of us. I, I pray that each of us would be open to you, Father, that we would allow you to, to speak to us, that we would allow you to love us and to forgive us and guide us, Lord, and, and strengthen us as we need to be strengthened. Um, help us, God, to be open to a personal relationship with you, a life-changing relationship with you. And Lord, we know that that relationship is nourished uh, and nurtured through many things, and one of which is prayer. So Lord, help us to feel comfortable talking to you Help us to trust you and to really trust, God, that, that you are there and that you listen. And Father God, sometimes we see the answers to our prayers, you know, that we want. And, and sometimes we don't get the answers that we want. 
But nonetheless, Father, help us to realize that, that you, Almighty God, is a, are available to, to listen and to instruct us as you see fit. Lord, we thank you for our church family. And as separated as we are right now, Lord, I do pray that we will find ways to connect with one another and other people of faith in you to, to be strengthened and built up and encouraged, Lord, to uh, be held accountable. Father, we, we need you and we need one another. We need that healthy fellowship. And so, God, I pray that each of us will seek ways to, to have that healthy Christian fellowship with others. Lord, if, if we need to make some changes, if we need to go out of our way, if we need to adopt new practices, Lord, I pray that each of us will be willing to do so so that we can have that, that spiritual connection, not only with you, but also with others. And Lord, we uh, thank you for the progress of our new building. Lord, we thank you for all that's uh, gone into that. And Lord, we thank you that it's going to be a, a sturdy structure. But Lord, we pray that you will help us um, and, and give us vision uh, for how to use it. Lord, may we touch lives uh, for you through this facility. And um, Lord, may we always remember our mission of, of making disciples of your son, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our Savior. We thank you that you offered your life on the cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Lord, we thank you that, that salvation and forgiveness comes by your grace through faith. Lord, help us to accept your grace and trust that it is real. Trust that it is complete. God, that you thoroughly save us, thoroughly redeem us from our sins, that we don't have to fear judgment. We don't have to fear condemnation, but we can rejoice that we are yours, that you have claimed us and, and, and made things right between us and you. Lord, we lift up the condition of our country, the political climate, the racial tension. And Lord, we ask for your blessing. God, we ask that you would humble each one of us. Help us to see the beauty of diversity. Help us to see our need for one another. And Lord, help us to start, start seeing one another as, as our brothers and sisters and as your children. And may we lead the way as your people in influencing our country and our world in these matters. Please heal our nation, but let it begin with, with our own healing and our own redirection, redirecting our, our priorities and our thoughts. And thank you, O oh God, for listening to us. And God, we pause for a few moments to lift up the names and circumstances uh, that we need to entrust to you. Andy and Dale Sapp. Doris and John McMakin, Herb Carruth, the Smith family, and the Surratt family. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for your love. And we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand and let's sing together. Mighty to save, we all as humans are in need of a Savior, in need of compassion from a sovereign God. And he offers that to us through Jesus Christ. Let's sing.
Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the Thank you for that beautiful music. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about a short story that Jesus told. Some of you could retell it for me. It's just a few paragraphs, just over 200 words. And usually my sermons, I do a little word count on them. They range anywhere from 1,500 to 1,700 words. So if you can gauge that by the length of, of this, this parable that Jesus told, just 200 words, and it changed the world. It literally changed the world. And so I titled today's sermon, uh, Basic Principles, just two of them, Basic Principles that will make our country and our world a better place. You know, and the interesting thing about it is you can apply these principles whether you're a Christian or not. I think they work best as applied as, um, as Christians. But, it, but even if you're not Christian, even if you can't fully trust in, in the God that we serve, you can apply these principles to your life, and you can make the world and our country a better place. So the setting of this story is a conversation 
um, where an expert of the law comes to test Jesus. Jesus was making a name for himself. He was gaining some popularity, and uh, the, he got people's attention, and people wanted to test him for various reasons, some to, to catch him saying something wrong and sort of debunk him, others just to see what kind of man he really was. But for whatever reason, this lawyer comes to Jesus, and he asks him a question. He's an expert in God's law, uh, mind you. And he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In other words, what do I have to do to get into heaven? You know, he's testing Jesus so we know he already has in mind the answer to his question. And Jesus sees exactly what's happening. And he, so he asks, he, Jesus decides to ask the lawyer a question. Well, what do you think? And the guy answers, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And you should love, the, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, as you've answered correctly, you know, do this and you will live. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those two principles, if we applied them consistently, would make our country and our world a much better place. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is uh, a commandment telling us that there is something that is larger than we are. Something is greater than we are. Something is more important than our own personal self-interest. Hopefully, your relationship with God, um, you know, uh, gives your life meaning and purpose. Hopefully, it gives you peace and joy and direction. Hopefully, it holds you accountable and gives you boundaries of what you should and should not do. Hopefully, your relationship with God causes you to care about the things that God cares about. Mercy, compassion, pain, hunger, brokenness you know if we had a sense of duty to the one the one who is greater than we are it would humble us it would change the way we think i believe it would affect our behavior and the way that we interact with others it would make our country and our world a better place you know i said that you can apply that even if you if you aren't a believer in god You know, love something. Acknowledge that there is something bigger and greater than you are. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your your community. Maybe uh, it's, it's your country. Maybe it's a cause in the world. There's always something that is greater than you are, that you can devote yourself to, that you can allow to humble you, that you can serve We aren't sufficient unto ourselves. There is always something greater than we are. But I want that something greater to be God in your life. Second principle, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I believe that God's word has always said it best. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, our country would be so much better. The world would be such a better place if we all loved our neighbors the way God has commanded us to. And the world is literally crying out for this. And we hear it on the news. I can't breathe. Black lives matter. Blue lives matter. All lives matter. All of these are cries from the world, whether they believe in God or not, for us to love our neighbors the way God has told us to. But we forget, or, or maybe we don't care. And so these cries have to go out because there's brokenness and, and there's pain and there's frustration in the world. The world needs God's love. The world needs God's guidance. The world needs us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. You know, and these other cries, they, they wouldn't be necessary if we did a better job of, of loving 
as God has commanded us to love. Love your neighbor as yourself. It will change our hearts. It will change our families. It will change our community. It will change our country. And it literally will change the world. But somebody's got to act first. Somebody's got to try to make it consistent. And let's, let's pick up that mantle and lead, lead the way as God's people. So um, Luke, back to the, the scripture lesson. Luke says that the lawyer who's talking to Jesus wanted to justify himself. After he said, you know, the two most important commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He says he wanted to justify himself. And so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Who's the neighbor that I'm supposed to love? He might have been asking, well, well, who do I not have to love? Jesus then tells him the parable of the Good Samaritan. A short story, just over 200 words, that has literally changed the world. From Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit of it and, and I'm going to uh, expound on, on it. So I won't read it straight through. But Jesus starts, a man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. And uh, the map tells us that uh, Jerusalem was 17 miles from Jericho. And people knew this road. Uh, they they would have been very familiar with this road. And, and so a lot of this road was out in the wilderness and where there were caves and uh, for people to take shelter or to hide. And people, if they were wise, they usually didn't travel by themselves because it could be dangerous. And Jesus says, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Preachers often note that Jesus doesn't tell us who the man is. You know, maybe, maybe Jesus has is, is, is intentionally done that because... That man could be any one of us. It could be any person that we come across in our lives. Most likely, though, the man was a Jewish person. He was coming down from Jerusalem, the, the, where the temple was, sort of the capital of, of, of God's people in the southern kingdom. He was coming down from Jerusalem. Remember, Jesus is talking to another Jewish man, an expert in, in the Hebrew Scriptures. And so it's likely that man saw the connection. Um, And uh, Jesus says, a priest walks by. He sees the man on the side of the road, but for whatever reason, he doesn't stop to help. Was he too busy? Was he afraid? We don't know. But a priest would have known God's laws, commanding him to help those in need, to look out for the widow, the sojourner, and the oppressed. He knew he, would have, uh, he was supposed to stop and help, but he didn't. He kept going. Next, Jesus says, a, a Levite, a, a servant at the temple, he walks nearby. He also would have known God's laws about helping others. But this Levite also passes by on the other side of the road. A Jewish man left half dead on the side of the road. Two Jewish men heading in the same direction, see him, and they pass right by. You know, maybe it'd be helpful for us to put ourselves in the story. Sometimes, we are the man on the side of the road who needs help. Other times, we're the priest or the Levite who has the opportunity to help. And we need to learn to act accordingly. So Jesus continues with the story. He says, Next a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And I want to pause there for just a moment. And uh, many of you know this, but uh, in that day and time, a lot of Jews and Samaritans did not get along with each other. There was a long history of clashing culture and religion and, and bad blood. There was a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of judgmental thoughts going back and forth. Sort of a feud broke out. Okay, and Jews and Samaritans normally 
didn't associate with one another. So Jesus, a Jewish man, is speaking to another Jewish man, an expert in the law, um, and he makes the hero of the story a foreigner, a Samaritan. Someone that he didn't necessarily like. Someone that he didn't necessarily trust. Someone that most likely negative emotions and feelings and thoughts came to his mind when he mentioned where the man was from. But he says, next, a Samaritan man came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. Jesus is telling uh, this story you know, to, to make the, the, the case that not every Samaritan is a bad Samaritan and not every Jewish person is a good Jewish person. And so the Samaritan, verse 34, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, which we learned uh, that a Daenerys is about a day's wages. So think about how much money you might earn in a day. He took out two denarii, two days' wages, and he gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Jesus looked at the lawyer that he was talking to, and he said, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And then Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. And put ourselves back in the story again. Think if you were the one who was beaten and left on the side of the road and then a foreigner, someone that you didn't agree with, someone that clashes with you culturally and, and spiritually, and they help you. Would you ever forget that? Would you be able to look at at that tribe of people or that race of people or that group of people in the same way again? Would something change in here? Would you grow some? Would your heart be softened some? Would you thank God for them? And would you be willing to do the same at some point in your life? Think about how that would affect you. Two out of three people walked right by that man. One man decided to help, probably saved his life. Jesus says, this is what it means to love your neighbor. Now you go and do likewise. You know, that's a challenge to each of us to look for needs, to see who needs help. And then to be willing to make a personal sacrifice of time and resources to make their life better. It doesn't matter who it is. It matters that they're in need. And Jesus tells us, go and do likewise. I don't think any of us could have been watching the news over the past however long, <laughs> especially since the beginning of this year. I don't think any of us could watch the news and think, God, you know, and, and couldn't think, God, please help us to make this world a better place. God, we need your blessings in this world. We need your guidance. And so if we, want to, if we really do want to make the world a better place, if we really want to bless others, if, if we really want to live a life that matters and a life that leaves a, a, a good thumbprint, you know, on this world, then we need to put God first in our lives. 
We need to humbly submit to God and learn to love him with all of our hearts. And we need to learn to do what God tells us to do, to love our neighbors as ourselves. You know, this reminds me of a song I learned, I believe I was in college, maybe even before that, maybe even at at Bible school growing up. It's a song about joy. J-O-Y. J is for Jesus, O is for others, and Y is for you. Who comes first? Jesus. Who comes next? Others. And who comes third? You. What's it spell? Joy. You want joy? Then put Jesus first. You want joy? Then, then put others next. You want joy? Then, then put yourself be, behind others. That's, that's where true joy comes from. That's a road to happiness. And it's a road into God's kingdom. You know, when we seek to love God first and when we seek to love our neighbors, it's a witness to others and it makes a powerful statement that God is good. And that God really does change our hearts. And that God changes the world through us. I think about the times in my life when um, I've seen others sincerely loving God first and actively loving their neighbors. You know, it it humbles me, it inspires me, and it makes me want to do something similar. There's a group from our church. You know, we weren't uh, able to have Salkahatchee this year, but Salkahatchee still happened. There's a group from our church and some other churches who have gone down to St. George, and they've worked on a house the last few days. They've raised their own money, you know, taken their own time, time off, and they've gone down to share some blood, sweat, and tears for the benefit of somebody they've never even met. You know, we can do things like that if we're paying attention, if our hearts are open, and if we truly do want to bless somebody else. We'll see opportunity after opportunity come up, and we'll see God provide again and again and again. Because God wants to bring his kingdom to this earth. And when we step out to do that, then he's going to make sure that we have Everything we need to accomplish his purposes. The Lord is alive and he is active and he is at work among us. Last story I want to share. I heard about a a 10-year-old boy named Cooper who uh, a few years ago heard about the people's needs in many of the villages of Malawi, a a country in Africa. He had heard that, that people were dying of malnutrition and thirst. And it upset him. But he also learned that there were sources of water that were just below them underground. And that that wells could be dug that could service, you know, a whole village of people. How old is this little boy? Ten years old. So this ten-year-old little boy hears about this need and he decides he's going to love his neighbors in Malawi. And so he goes around and he asks his family and his his neighbors and his friends, not for big amounts of money, but for change, pocket change, small amounts of money. He gives some of his birthday money to this. He gives some of his Christmas money to this. And in a year's time, guess what? He had raised $5,000. And this little boy was able to send that to an organization that dug a well that's going to service a community of people. A 10-year-old boy is changing the world. We can too. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand and let's sing our closing song, Here I Am, Lord, Send Me. Are 
the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. country and our world a better place to be love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself friends we can do that and we will see if and if we do we will see God work through us in mighty ways so we have to let our love be active we have to actively love god and we have to actively love our neighbors we can do that though in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen